All right, well, let's talk about yeah. so let's go ahead and call the meeting to order. Um, could Lynn, could you do the red roll call, please? Kathy McCoy. I'm present. Gary Hilgendor. Here. Oh, we have Mark Helwig. Yes. Marshall Savitsky is not here. Elaine Smith is not here. Katie Bellinger. We she talk. said she's coming, but yeah, so did Elaine. So we'll see. Okay, Ryan Reed. Reed Schumann. Amen. Lorraine Bouget. Here. Uh, Andy Alvarado, it? Bruce Poquet, um, Doug Rotek, here. Mike Roller, John Yackel. So I think we have what, nine now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So what, we need just one more? Or two more? Mm -hmm. Two more. Two more. Yeah. So if we get Bruce and somebody else, so it's another thing that we have to do. Three quarters. Uh, the certification of the open meeting compliant. This meeting has been noticed to the public and news media as required by section 19.84 of the Wisconsin statute. Katie? Oh, five. Well, we just need one more member. Mm -hmm. Could um, somebody maybe go try to get Bruce to come, or just we can move the agenda around? I can. I can. No, you don't worry. It's better than me. Right? It's better than me. <laughs> so we could actually get our bylaws amended. Uh, Okay, um, going forward, uh, meeting agenda, I think it's been posted. And is there any changes or anything that anybody would like to see? We'll move on to minutes of the previous meeting. Um, everybody had a chance to review them. Any corrections? I think we got it right. Um, Sheriff, you were the one who actually chose me and he's not enough. He chose me and go last time. I believe so. I wasn't here, and I, you know, I thought I updated that. Maybe you did. Okay. It says that's all the meeting order. Yep. Anybody else? Any changes or conditions? Not I'd entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the previous meeting. Make that motion. Okay. Second. Motion and a second to approve the minutes as presented. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we're going to move on to the revisions um, to the bylaws, membership and subcommittee, and I think we have copies of those. Andy, this is the final one now, right? Yeah, this has been the same. Same one that we've been working on? Yeah, same draft is starting back in October. Okay. Right. Kathy? Yes. Andy, are the revisions highlighted in any way or in redlined, or are we just incorporated them? Um, they were highlighted, but they're not showing up in the, the PDF version. Let me see if I can throw up. Or yeah, or just what are they? I can't need to look that. It's been a while. Now, hang on. The first change Thank under you. Article 4, yeah. number 6, was added that the CJCC may designate necessary subcommittees or work groups to accomplish their work, as well as be assigned responsibility for oversight of programs in the absence of an existing oversight committee. Under Article 5, structure, the change is from um, 14. Excuse me, from 13 to 15 members, and so now it shall have 13 voting members instead of 12. And that's because we added the um, items, the tribal right? Um, changes below that are to number or letter D, jail administrator, designee. Then we added K and L. So K is Sawyer County Health and Human Services representative, and then State of Wisconsin Public Defender's Office representative. So the one in the back is not because I don't have L on it. It wasn't the one that was on this is 
the right. in, in your packet it's the one that says amended that's the one in your packet it's the one on the screen right now yeah it's a crap oh. we can will on it on this one. so that's where we're adding julia um a representative yeah, yeah already represented, represented yeah. you're looking at the packet aren't you Andy? yeah this is the packet of so i don't understand what oh well it's not on that agenda on our ipads well i wonder I, if andy sent me a new one no this is the packet right here i pulled it up on there. so if you go to the website you'll see that well there's two there's the original version of the uh bylaws right. on there right. and then there's the second oh, oh, there's okay. The amendment. okay okay, okay. 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 And i don't have either one and those are the, the only changes. Oh, but in our original, didn't we have the tribal judge? Tribal judge might be one of the um, tribal government representatives. It's on this one, LCO tribal judge. It was on our original one before they were amended. Mm. I don't think the intention was to take the tribal judge off. No, there. no, no. So that would have to be back on there. I don't know why it got taken off. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. You make us a committee of 16 then. How does the board feel about that? So, do you think that's too many? Well, we do need each other too. So then, would one thing be it was already done? It was on the original. Yeah, it should be on there. It should be on here. It's just it got admitted when it got retyped. So it's technically still on here. But the only intent was to add a uh, health and human services representative. And to change the others to designate. So if um jail administrator couldn't be here, he could send somebody else in other words. Seems like a lot, but I think we need those people. What do you guys do? I don't see a problem with it. Okay. Um were any additional changes? That would have to go back in then. Yeah. So that would be M. Andy, was there anything else that? Yeah, so the LCO travel judge is K, and then L is Sutter County Health and Human Services representative, and M is State of Wisconsin Public Defender's Office. Sure. Okay. And we're going to 16 and 14. Okay. So then I'll make that motion, Ms. Chairwoman, that we have approved the bylaw with those edits and additions. Second one. All right. Motion and a second. Um, anybody else have anything that they saw in these bylaws? We've been kicking them around for a long time. Are you so. sending this to the county board then too? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. If not, um, all in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. So this will go to the county board. Um, I think at the same time, uh, are we going to make a recommendation for who the health and human service representative should, is going to be? Because that has to go from us also to the county board. Yeah, I think it goes to the either the chairman or I, and then we make a recommendation to the board. Right. And that would be Julia, right? I assume it's going to be Julia. Yeah. Yeah, you guys have to sign. <laughs> yeah. I, I no. Go ahead. Um, you know, unless you want to revisit it uh, after August, but uh, should I mean, I'm looking at the branch two circuit judge if they should have both positions listed on there and both be um, listed as members. Um, I, we're going to do that now since you're doing it. Maybe we can just create it when it's filled. It's it, it, that person can be there unless we can readdress it back in August. Or yep. coming in August. I would amend my motion to include that. Agreed. Yes. That we had the second yep. circuit court judge yep. to our list. It just saves time. That's a good point. Yeah. Yep. Okay. You good to that, Mark? Okay. So we have a uh, amendment that the we already passed the motion. Okay. You can make that an additional 
Make additional I'll make an additional motion adding the second Surrey County Circuit Court judge to our list of participants mm -hmm. in the CJCC sure. committee. And then I will second. So I now I have a motion to add a visible position to our membership of the CJCC committee mm -hmm. of the second um, court judge, Surrey County Court judge. And then, Mr. Chair, yes. so then that would also change that we'll have a 17 member right. CJCC and 15 voting members. Right. Okay. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Now I'm going to address, because I have concerns that this committee is too big then, getting too big, because we already have problems with getting forums. Um, one of the suggestions might be to only have one Slayer County Board representative and one tribal government representative. We'll bring our committee size back down again. I don't know how anybody may feel about it, but I mean, the larger committee you get, this is what happened kind of before with this committee, is it got so large that we can never get forums a lot of times. Um, so I don't know if there's any. Well, I kind of like having two tribal reps because there's times we have to travel. Mm -hmm. Then one of us, one of us is at least here that we can still be active. So I kind of like that. So kind of, that's why I haven't been here. I've been on travel at times, and I never know when it's going to happen at times. So it always helped to have one of us here. I, I think Kathy brings up a valid point, and I like the idea of the added members and participation. But if it goes back to the attendance issue, if we're going to have that big of a committee here, we have to have attendance. We we've had board we've had meetings here where we didn't even have enough attendance to have a quorum. Mm -hmm. I my issue on it is if we're going to put all these people on there, then I mean they have, should be attended. Again, we just made you know we just made a nice list of people that we want to have on it, and we we got that full representation pretty much right now, okay. and then it should just be happening. Okay. Or I guess we go to our bylaws and does state that after three meetings of somebody missing, we can start to look at uh, look back to our bylaws to like talk about to get people to be attending or to get other representatives from those departments. Okay, I just wanted to bring it up because we want to not have on four of these All right, anything else on the bylaws? Just one thing I've, I've noted. And I'll have to find the opinion on this is that we needed a three quarter vote of the appointed members to add a position. So that's under section B number two. Then it indicates it requires a member of the bylaws. And down in Article seven, change in bylaws it requires a two thirds majority vote of the appointed members. And it requires. Um, that to be included on the agenda and any action taken on the proposed amendments must be made at a subsequent meeting of the CJCC. So I don't know if that means we need to do it two meetings in a row. Because right, it wasn't on the agenda, correct? It is on the agenda. Oh, oh. It is on the agenda. Yeah. But I don't know, two thirds, do you have to do this two months in a row or what is that? There's just a, uh, we'll get, I'll get that straightened out if I need to bring it back another month and bring yeah. it back. Otherwise, we'll take it to the county board. Okay. Thank you. Um, moving on, we have the December jail report. Sure, you want any um, comments or? I'll, I'll let I'll let uh, Lieutenant uh, Waller okay. explain. Okay. He's <clears throat> sure. Our uh, average daily population is uh, is quite low, actually, uh, much lower than months past, uh, with an average of fifteen. 0.8 females to 51.2% or 51.2 uh, males. Um, average probation, probation incarceration is going to be nearly eight. Average pre sentence incarceration, uh, nearly 42. And average sentence incarceration is 17.4. Um, at the time this report was run, we only had 15 uh, females in Barron. I believe that's closer to 20 now again. Um, and we still have one on monitor. So at what point do you think we'll be able to have the back in our jail? Oh, can we get some applicants? 
We got zero. We did. We did start training a female here last month. Yeah. Um, but there's there's no pending applications. Do you think that's just because of low salary or? I guess everybody has an opinion. Yeah. 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 $21 an hour. Yes, I have a question. Yes. How come we took race out of the jail report? I did that. Yeah, how come? Well, one of the reasons I think we got very fixed on the race. And uh, I, I'd i like to see us focus more on the issues and fix the issues at large. But well, it's I think a, that was an issue. What's that? That was an issue. The race? Yeah. How's that? Because I, I sit on the governor's. Okay, uh, we're going to get into the big back and forth about this, okay? Right. And you have the right to ask the question. He answered your question, right? So I, you know, thank you. Does he have the right to take it off without coming to a committee or anything? It's his report, yes. He, I, he, you know, if the committee wants to see that on, then the committee can ask once again for him to put that back on the report that he has. The well, then I'll ask. Is this the committee of jurisdiction then? Mm -hmm. It's public safety. Public safety. Oh. So it would have to provide public safety would have to be that's yeah, yeah. who that's who would have to request or make a motion that it go back on the board. All right. Anything else then? I mean, as far as well, I guess we'll get into your report back so that will give us some more numbers on how many people are deferred then. Okay, so right now I'm pre trial. We have 107 people. Um, 33 of those are court reminders only. <laughs> we have 12 currently on diversion. We have four on diversion pending. Actually, they were doing an intake for diversion when I left the office. Um, <clears throat> 14 people have completed diversion. We have um, 24 people that are currently determined eligible for diversion. Um, right now we have three people pending failed on diversion. We have 30 people on the wait list and we have 36 pending intakes. 22 are still in custody. Oh, I just gave you the December numbers. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we have 109 currently on pretrial, 36 are court reminders only, 11 on diversion, um, three um, diversion pending um, intakes, the one was just in doing your intake, 15 completed, um, 24 pending diversions, two pending court reviews, two pending failed court reviews, so one has actually failed out. 35 wait lists and 34 pending new bonds. Sorry. <laughs> so now you know December and January. Um, we are looking at hopefully, possibly next week or the week after starting to look at taking people off of the wait list. And depending on how that goes, how quickly we can get through those then being able to start taking people on again but we'll see how quickly we can get through the wait list so it's a wait list wait list been pretty consistent it depends on how quickly we can get um, a hold of people so as as a term of people's bonds they are supposed to update the clerk of courts and us with their address and phone number they don't always do that. So we have a protocol of getting in contact with people. And if they don't return our you know, communications within so long, we don't if we don't continue to contact them. So then we move on to the next person. So you know, so, yeah. 
we can't we we can't continue 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 if it if they don't return our communications right, because forward. we have to move no, on to team. the next person so some people you. will some people will keep their phones on or some people turn them off <clears> or some people don't stay at the same address but Anybody? Are, are, are those people, some of the people homeless or just don't have means or what's happening? Well, some are homeless or some move. Some, like I said, turn off their phones. Yeah. But if they don't minutes. update, if they don't update us or the clerk yeah. of courts with yeah. their communication methods, there isn't anything yeah. that we can do. You know, we try all methods. Yeah. Or, you know, if they list a contact for like a family member. We will contact those family members, but again, we can only do so much. So does that help having that office at the tribe, the tribal office then to have access to the services and the health? It needs? does. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We've found that people's attendance increases by us being out there, um, but they they do have to make their appointments. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and and we're we're open to doing alternative methods also you know we meet by zoom we meet by phone but people still have to make their yeah they yeah they do right thank okay. you anybody else any questions um, from your perspective do you think it's going quite well well i mean i only see you very seldom there, there's really never so very many much you know there's we could always use more resources so yeah. it's from the court's position it's it's frustrating setting bonds knowing that they're not going to be monitored because there's a limited number of people or a limited number of people that justice point can take but um i mean when they were monitoring that are the ones that they are monitoring and the diversions i mean that, that we're, we're progressing and that's good yeah that's good well i think as one of our jail members are coming down a little bit too because we don't have as many people sitting in jail as we used to yeah and that was our goal keep addressing us no, i'm sure yes could i go back to the jail if you'd like, sure. Um, I'm curious, why is William Wagner out of county? Uh, Mr. Wagner is uh, is a close relation to one of our jail staff members. Um, for respect for him, okay. he was inside the house about a county. So, and also, I don't know if you read Michael Linders has passed away. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah, the, the time I generated this report back in December, um, he was. He, he was still right now he's a note so yeah but they're right now yeah. right now it's just yeah that's why today yeah he died right okay do we not we had you justice and mental health update no, we don't have it we don't have anything no okay so then we'll move on to Medicated Assisted Therapy MD at the MCO recovery clinic update. I'm not going to deal with anything on that. And Judge Smith was working, I think, and attended some things on that. We um are having a new um rider starting March in March, March 3rd. And um we have our medical director and uh, um, registered nurse, our nurse practitioner is stepping in to fill in until that takes place. And then IHS is helping whatever they need to do to keep the program going because there's been some changes now. And um, they're working on programming to help it make it more um, holistic and providing all the services and having more of that intertwined. So. Um, that's happening. Yeah. Um, moving on, health and human services. I think you guys have a presentation. I have a presentation. Yeah. Okay. You can go ahead. We have. Oh, you can do it. No, you can. I jump up. Okay. So, Joyce is on. So, I'm gonna. Hopefully, she can share. Make her. Uh... She's connected. She can go ahead and share. Yep. Here it is. Oh, a little bit easier to see it. I'm really yeah. glad I'm here. here for this today because I think this has got a lot yeah. of really different statistics. And yeah. 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 Yep. Uh, about where we're at, where we need to go. 
So the, the point of the presentation is to really look at um, the gap analysis that we have done using evidence-based solutions. Um, one of the benefits of the opioid summit that WCA with Johnson um, Counties Association is putting on um, is really pulling other counties together and also giving us some good resources to work with. So I was able to attend last month and then I'll be going tomorrow, actually. Um, and one of the one of the things that came out of that was really looking at this in the framework and it helped us put all of the information that Jess and Joyce gathered into something that makes sense for us to kind of look at. So we'll just go through each section. Um, what I'm looking for from you guys is any additional input that you might have on where you see some gaps or maybe something that we have that we haven't noted um, and or some additional solutions. So we're bringing it here looking at this piece and then from here based on what we get from input we can start putting together kind of a priority list work plan and dollars to that so thinking about prevention um the boxes that you see that have bolded on in each of these pages are areas we feel like we we have a good opportunity to spend additional resource time give a little bang for our buck partly because we are moving in certain directions and we have some good buy-in there and um, as we move forward. So looking at education, um, in the fall, we had a baking panel. Um, DARE, I believe this started in winter and Hayward. Sheriff, is that validated? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yep. I wanted to double check that. So and DARE, DARE is starting in Hayward, is that my understanding? Yes, well, the Sheriff's Office has taken the DARE program over in the city and and our DARE officer is teaching all the fifth grade classes in, this, in the Hayward School District. And winter too, right? And winter, yes. yep. Do you and know what's happening at tribal school? LCO has a DARE type program, yep. but we haven't validated which one it is yet, right? Yeah. They just told they just told us it was very similar yep. to DARE, it's yep. not called DARE. Yeah, yep. So, so we have that going on. Um, we know that the staff at the, for all of the schools is looking for additional in-school training for students and staff in addition um, as we move forward. Um, I know that we were kind of working on some things pulled together, um, but it was hard to kind of get everything to pan out. One of the things that we found where we think we can really spend some good time is try to get it to be a unified training across the county yep. so that we all have the same training for all faculty and students at specific ages as we move forward. And the other thing that we think is really important to incorporate in the training is coping skills, because coping skills is really what is leading to the substance misuse. So I think we're in a good spot with the schools. They're, um, they're really looking for moving forward with this. So if we spend time and energy in that area, it would be good. That came up at our last um, public meeting that we had for impact age metal fix programming because of the funding that was cut at the national level for prevention the programs that used to exist in the community are no longer no longer exist but we need that support so we've been trying to to fight for that at that level and bring that back because we're trying we're fighting a battle here but we're trying to prevent as much as we can so hopefully that's going to change the that other thing. piece with this education piece is um just made me think of it is uh instead uh looking at alternatives to um suspensions so if they are caught vaping or caught and we're suspending them and bringing them out of the school it really is not in the best interest so if we can work into some of the classes and additional classes that they would have to take um, rather than those suspensions is another alternative that we'd like to look at. And I'm just going to say for the sake of time, or did you like well, to? Yeah, I probably don't know. I was just going to ask the committee if they let you go through one section first and then, then you follow by okay. questions. Okay. okay. And I will try that because it does take a little bit to yeah. work your yeah. home. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, questions are important, but if you could do one section, then okay, time, then okay. So, um, interventions uh, tailored to the community. Um, we have law enforcement handle with care, um, and what we don't have is a county baking ordinance ordinance or uh, an effective mentor program for kids outside of LCO. Mm -hmm. Um, so looking at that, prescription drug monitoring programs, opioid prescribing guidelines, and regulating promotion and marketing of opioids, I can just kind of jump through this. 
Um, we have uh, the state has a program for looking to see who already has been prescribed narcotics, and so those prescribers need to look at that. So they're not bouncing from prescriber to prescriber. Hospital has guidelines in. Well, there are new guidelines that just came out for opioid prescribing that we'll be working on the clinics with. Um, and then we really aren't seeing um, any issues with the marketing and promotion um, when it comes to the opioids here. Better health, mental health care definitely is an area where we see we do have therapists. Um, it's just limited and we know that there are late waiting lists. Um, so really working through um, looking at telehealth options, also trying to get providers in this area is something that we need to work with economic development with um, to be able to make it appealing to come to this area. And then the opioid safe disposal programs, we do have three drop boxes, but there aren't any at a non-law enforcement location. So having more take back days where we could have them take back in the community, have law enforcement close by. I know we did it at Clean Sweep. We had a really good success rate with that um, and trying to encourage that more. Um, my description on this is my husband was in hospice and died and I had a lot of narcotics in the household. I was more worried about my fun the funeral and moving forward with things than I had all of these drugs sitting in my house. Um, and I'm, I'm nursing, so it should have been easy for me to get rid of. But, you know, if we don't make things an easy process, um, they're going to be sitting in people's houses and accessible. So looking at that as we move forward. Okay. Any questions on, on prevention or yes. on what we have or what the solution is? Uh, is there a cost for them for mental health? For I'm, I'm just looking at, I think, like insurance, are people not accessing care because of insurance? Right. We have not looked into um, whether there's difficulty getting in because you're uninsured. At this point, I think it's even difficult getting in if you are insured. So probably a combination of the both, but we'll add we'll add the insurance. And especially for teens. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah. it's extremely difficult to get treatment for teens. We'll add the insurance component and the payment to that. Okay, moving on to harm reduction. Um, the availability of fentanyl strips, we don't have that available right now. I know that there are questions um, with uh, law enforcement, not, not from the treatment centers mainly, on you know, will people get in trouble if they have fentanyl strips on them? So we need to get communication between law enforcement, Baziki and North Lakes um, in place as we move forward with that, so as they make those recommendations. I don't think it's, uh, in our discussions, we haven't thought that that was gonna be an issue, um, but we just need to make sure everybody's on the same page. Um, Narcan training, that is being done by North Lakes and LC, or at Baziki, actually, they've been pulling together that, um, again, um, just some clear communications, I think, between pulling everybody together. Um, what we don't have identified is how many sites have been trained who all out there still wants to be trained and being able to make sure that people in the public know that they can get trained and have Narcon available, especially if they um, have somebody that is using um, and would be, they'd be around with them. And then the syringe services program, um, we do have sharks disposal at public health. I'm not sure that everybody is aware of that, but we've also been informed that there's lots of sharks in different locations. Um, we probably need to be looking more at additional drop-off places so that <clears throat> needles can be um, disposed of safely. Uh, clean needle exchange, we'll need to identify if, as we move forward, that would probably be where fentanyl strips would be. Um, and the big thing with that is we really can't have that at the MAT sites because we don't want somebody who's actively using um, connecting with people who are trying to, to be in recovery. So looking at what that would look like as we move forward. And then supervised injection sites, that is another thing. So what this is, is in larger cities where they have a lot of overdoses that are occurring in certain areas, they will have supervised sites. Um, in our jurisdiction, we have not done a full fatality review, but from what we're seeing, it does not really, it looks like it's more happening in homes and not at specific locations. So this probably would be something we'd look at. It's more getting that Narcan out to those houses and fence strips. Question? Yes, yeah, you look like you had a question. Yeah. <laughs> um, first, I 
fentanyl scripts, say if they, they have a, a script and you know, they get pulled over and they got script, uh, fentanyl scripts on them and they have a script, it, are they okay? I, I, I'm going to, and I don't know that we've really even talked about this from a law enforcement perspective. Well, what was that again? Say if uh, an individual gets pulled over and they have fentanyl scripts on them, but they have a script with them, with that, would they be okay? Should be, hasn't been an issue. And, and we're team players. It it comes back to law enforcement. It law enforcement's not there to just arrest people if right. they help oh, people. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and that's really always been the case. So yes. I'm not overly worried about that. Um, yep. And as far as getting Narcan out to the public, is that? Uh, I was going to say, could you do? Could there be some type of training? I mean, just like yeah. they do some oh, VR training now, yes. Northwoods uh, Tech mm -hmm. College. That, mm -hmm. Could you hold some regular? Mm -hmm. um, Communities where anybody from the community would register and come in and be trained. And that would be part of North Lakes and Baziki's work, and we can work, we'll work with them to, to move it out more to the public. At this point, they've been working trying to get more sites done. Um, we'll be looking at it even from the county perspective, getting that training done. The in the, yep. Well, yeah, they um, and they for... could pull that in. So the Narcan, what they're getting is Narcan, their specific grants from the state, which gives them Narcan, because Narcan is expensive. Yep. So you, yeah. you kind of want to go yeah. up through a grant yeah. site. Yeah. But we don't charge for it at the LCL Clinic, and the yeah. pharmacist does trainings for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Both the uh, nasal and the. So we're looking at trying to get and, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Right.
Right. Move on to treatment. Um, so increased access to treatment um, and or telehealth. We know telehealth um, is available, but we do have a waiting list. When it comes to local inpatient treatment, we do not have have it for like an inpatient type. Um, we have access to um, providers outside of the area. Um, one, one of the things that we feel is a place to spend time and energy is working with those that um, are providers, uh, the hospital and or the clinics to kind of create a, a preferred provider network so that we have beds or have treatment facilities that are readily available for us to get to. Um, being able to set up a treatment center here and keeping it staffed in our local area is just really, really probably not feasible. Um, what we need to do is focus on our energy on when they come back here, is this is a safe place for recovery. Yeah. Um, so you'll kind of see that on the next page. But And then um, one of the things that we do need to work on um, is I know that there's been Namakagan does not stop at the Ziki. And so we might want to look at what that route looks like, at least the last time I heard. So um, if anybody has any updates on that, we have not double checked that. How come? If, if the individual requests to be to go there, there, they should be. They should be. Yeah. Okay, we should validate that they're going to. I was like, I'm right. thinking you were. I'm sorry, that, what? Uh, if they request. Uh, what your name says? Oh, yeah. If, if oh, yeah. request a certain location, we dropped off. There's, there's a four stop service. Right. Request it several days in advance. 24 hours. 24 hours. Well, not all of the things that all the people need in each of the So I'm trying to get them out. We'll, 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 yeah, so we get we'll, we'll get on them. Mark yep. and I will sit on yep. the board. Okay. So. okay. We just yep. want to valid. We want to make it easy. But yeah. The yep. big thing is for people it's in this type of situation, it's already difficult enough yep. to get them where they need to go. Um, if we can make sure it's easy for them, that's going to be helpful. And we have not validated if there's a, there should be a North Lake stop because I would think that they can stop at the clinic. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and it's just too far away between the Ziki and yeah. the LCO Health Center for walking and that type of thing. Mm. So good. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, medications for opioid use disorder. We do have Medicaid medication with the therapy, um, which is great. We have it at two locations. Um, we do not have it in the jail, but it sounds like there's potential with some grants to move forward with that. So Becky, you have something? Well, I mean, we would like that. And yep, there's a potential people. There's potentials for grants out there. There's so potential. Yeah. So uh, that would be uh, something if we can move forward with that. Um, and um, the other thing that we don't have a really good program with is when there is an overdose, non fatal, and the, it's EMS and or to the emergency department is getting that warm hand off to a um, medicated assisted therapy and getting an injection right at um, the emergency room. Uh, so there's a few things that we can work on there to, to really streamline that. So um, expand and diversify workforce. Uh, Northwest, Northwoods Tech is looking at increasing courses um, and there is potential there's some potentials in that area. So really looking at, again, with economic development and increasing our staff workforce here. Uh, improving healthcare responder workforce addiction training, really um, looking at crisis intervention. It's, it's fairly limited in what we have available. And um, how do we train, those, train up those first responders, um, law enforcement, fire, EMS, and how to work with um, and have that skill base uh, ready to go. Um, and then just, look, it's really, as we know, there's a lot of stigma um, when it comes to substance misuse. So uh, looking at additional education there. Um, we have the Ziki as a treatment center for culturally competent care. And uh, we're making very good inroads in treatment alternatives to incarceration of drug court and justice points. So did you have any additions you wanted to add to that piece, Becky? We have our first um, treatment court work group meeting right after this. And we plan to post for treatment court coordinator slash case manager, hopefully this week, maybe next week, depending on how things progress. So that's exciting. 
So definitely yeah. making some good in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. When we were talking about medicated assisted therapy mm -hmm. in the jail, yeah, we're better. under contract right now for our health care in the jail, correct? But would that have to be something, Andy, maybe you noticed that would have to be addressed in that contract? Um, and I don't know how often that's been moved or what the nurse are. The medical director would have to improve, approve any treatments. I know that for for sure. Good. Whether it's in a contract or not, the medical no, director has to. So. But I mean, it would have to somehow, I think, be incorporated in that contract, wouldn't it? Or just if they sign off? I don't know. Well, in and out of that I think we're, we discussed it briefly and discussed the other day a little bit. There's We have to address it in the contract in ACH. Yep. Yep. There's been some reluctance on their part, and this has come up in the past, I understand. So we might have to so we met those. we met we so Vivitrol came to us this summer and we met with us. The problem we ran into was first of all, when they came to us, they came to us two days before the grant was due, and we weren't aware of that. Mm. And and then the other problem that we came to was um Robin wasn't very keen on on doing that, which is, you know, that's Robin's call. I get that. But, you know, that grant opportunity was was out of our reach because it came to us too late. So in the future, we need to be aware of grant opportunities. But we do have, you know, possible other possible grant opportunities that we may be able to do in the future. We just need to make sure that it's everybody's on board with it. And so that was where we thought that reaching out to when Lieutenant Wooler and I had talked, we thought that you utilizing Julia to do the administration part, the medicated administration part would be a possibility. <laughs> My team has <laughs> <laughs> been poking people for a while, so. <laughs> I think we'd still need, like you said, the medical director. We would need the medical director from there, I think, unless you would put that under the medical director from public health and we come in and do it like we do on STD. So, so I, I was going to ask too about that with the jail. So, what exactly is happening then when you talk about that grant? Um, those are things we're pursuing, we don't have yet, but you mentioned something. What were we referring to? So in the past, it was the Vivitrol grant. So that one is passed. Yep. But in the future, if other ones come into play, we can go after those. So nothing exists at this time. Not right now. Okay. But if if ones come into play, such as, and this one isn't out there right now, but such as like, um, if if ones come up for, um for Vivitrol in the future or or for something like that, we can go after those if, if we have somebody to administer. And that's part of really doing this work because we wanna know where we wanna focus our energies, start building yep. uh, committees and the work that's already there, knowing that a grant is probably gonna come up and then we are ready to go for that yep. grant. And that's why Julia and I have been in collaboration and been sitting on work groups together and Lieutenant Wooler and I have been making sure that we're on top of things. Because are we seeing those high numbers of addictions? Oh, within in the jail system? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. I would say that substance guessing. abuse is a real substance issue. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's what we're seeing through the court that's revolving. That's what we're seeing through the tribe. That's what we're seeing different things that we're concerned with. And, Okay, are we ready to, does anything have anything else on treatment or should we move forward to recovery? Again, I had already noted that um, I really think that this focusing on prevention and really thinking about recovery as our most important spots. Again, if we don't have a safe place for people to come back to, to recover in, we can spend all the money we want on treatment and it's going to be a revolving door. Yeah. So, um, as we look forward, uh, we look at employment opportunities for people in recovery. What we have right now is the workforce shortage, so it is making it a little bit easier to be able to get people out there and employed. Um, we, we know that there's not a lot of information out there of employer incentives for hiring somebody. Um, and the other thing that 
we have found is that places that have been willing to hire people, they haven't necessarily been successful. And part of that is we don't have a good plan in for employment coaches to both help the business owner, um, manager be successful and for the person, the employee to learn the job skills and to learn how to be, um, to show up to work, what they need to do, and also be able to have somebody there to advocate for the need. So if they need to be off for medicated assisted therapy, they need to come to jail, they need to, for, to court um, to be able to make sure that they have those times off and that they know that that's really approved time off and people aren't just yeah. kind of not showing up to work. So we feel like if we can, if people have opportunity for employment, um, they'll feel successful, they'll be better in their recovery. It also gives them funding towards housing. So um, we know that we have limited amount of transitional or sober housing, um, but if they can get employment to be able to get them out of that previous home or situation that is not good for their recovery, that's where that employment comes into play. Peer counseling is another place where we really, really um, feel like we need to get up and going. Um, when we've gone to a number of conferences and talked to people in recovery, those that have peer counseling or peer coaches um, have been real successful and have said that, that you know, they really kept them moving forward. So uh, definitely an area where would be worth to um, really connect. And people that are in recovery, it is good for them as well to be able to give back um, to the community. And then intensive support to sustain recovery. Um, we will be going through um, in, in identifying all of the groups that we have. One of the things we don't have is a, a good day treatment center. Um, that could be something that we could look at from, not from the county actually doing that, but is it something that North Lakes or Baziki mm -hmm. would put into place? So that is what I've got. Um, you mentioned this earlier. The thinking in some moment, like when they say if they go to the hospital <clears throat> because they had overdosed and some sort of a handoff mm -hmm. to the, the support. Mm -hmm. Even you know, a peer, peer counselor. Yeah, because yeah. they I'm sure they they go to the hospital, they get fixed or you know whatever. And then yeah. What? And if they've been brought, you know, brought back with Narcan, sometimes it's that's that wake up call and that might be that that key moment that if we had not really connected out there may lead to recovery or treatment and recovery. Well, I think Gary, you can speak to how successful having members have been in your program. Well, I mean, that's what's made it more work. I mean, it's so I guess the final piece would be, um, you know, you gave us some good input. We will develop a work plan off of this and um, start to look at what those funding sources would look like, um, what that work would look like, and be able to bring that back. I was just saying too, under um, employment coaches, I mean, Ventures has that program. That's exactly what they do. They send, send coaches actually into job sites with individuals to acclimate them. Um, and it's, I mean, it's and a model follow, that's been, follow it's that, been work. Follow and, that model, because I mean, that's work. Different clientele, different, mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. but nonetheless, it's the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. Is, is workforce development still involved <clears throat> in any stage? I, they used to have a program that I thought went into the jail where they had a workforce that people would go through. When I was at the, they were the WIPC, Lori uh, was in working with me on programs that I talked to, had visits with the jail, some of the jail people, because they had set goals. They it's a great program, maybe workforce development. Well, look to see. I've got Joyce there visually writing well, down I'm pieces wondering. for us. WITC used to be a lot more involved with yeah, the and everywhere else, and we kind of lost it. Mm -hmm. so when they switched over, so maybe yeah. that's just we just to get the, They're still pretty involved, though. Are they with bringing you, programs in? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of programming with them as well as otherwise. It's It really has, it's increased, not decreased. It's just about getting once you're out in the. It's working with our employers and getting that. Because it's hard there. with those who are battling addiction. Then they got their criminal record. Then they yeah. got those charges. Whatever is happening there, you combine that, and then those employers are. 
and they didn't necessarily all come from a background that nope. that was a that nope. they had positive work experiences. Yep. So, um, well, thank you very yeah. much. And I, that probably leads into I don't want to cut you short, but that probably okay. leads into maybe Katie, you're going to check into some housing information, right? Yes. So, um, Stephanie Nault, she is our new purchase order good service gal for the region, um, for region six which is for the department that's anywhere from Sawyer County and goes up to Marinette. So she's providing services and um, deals with contracts for anyone in those units. I reached out to her and she wasn't able to come today, but she can attend the February 8th meeting. And so she can provide any, um, and she'll be in person. I have her actually scheduled to do a um, training in my office that day, so it works out perfect. So, um, but, Housing continues to look at you. Right now, we have three um, homeless sex offenders on GPS. Mm -hmm. um, and we've tried everything. It's not because my agents are not trying. Um, we have that. We have soon to be two more. One releases today, tomorrow. He's going to be homeless. Um, and then we have two coming out of prison in March and April. One um, significant violent history. Um, we just cannot find them a place to live. So um, just kind of what I can say, I'll let Stephanie talk more about it. Um, but the state, like we're not, we, we can't buy property. You know, we can't, we're, we're not um, landlords. We can't buy the property, but if we have a property, um, we will have contracts and we have the funds to house people there so that they're not homeless. We would pay, I mean, last week I spent hours on the phone with, all the local hotels and there's funds nobody would take from our client um and so that's kind of kind of what i have stephanie will be helpful she um i know the only thing that she mentioned in her email is it might be a delay our fiscal year starts in july every year um so there might be more information then but she's she's willing to come um and talk if she can be on the agenda for next time like we want to make sure that it's on the agenda for next time and I mean, this kind of came to light because we realized there's money there. And mm -hmm. this housing issue has been yep. a big issue for anybody coming out of the jail. And right. you know, like well, I said, if the county is any kind of position or if you look at purchasing or something, we've talked about this because we, we would have money from outside sources that would actually run it, but they right. can't. Yeah, you can't buy it, right? No, and I was able to really do some digging, and it seems like we came close two times before. Mm -hmm. I don't know the years, but then there was, and there isn't a city ordinance, right? Sex offender city ordinance? I, I've been gone from there eight years, or was it before? I don't think there is, um, and so that's... I, I can't verify any changes since so, then. So I'm not sure if it was just the police department said no this is going to cause chaos i'm not sure exactly but what i was told is um it was shot down by the city um and then another one was actually the building right next to us almost right before covid hit right next to my building um we got super close to signing that one a church was going i'm thinking it might be old gospel yeah it was us yeah you were, okay. were going to buy it and then it was too much to fix it up yeah okay Okay, so we've come close. So the state is definitely willing to fund us. It's just finding the location. And it is. It's a huge problem because yeah, it is. We cannot have the house to hold to take a sex. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. Neither can HUD. Neither can all those other all the programs. Mm -hmm. They can't yeah. be sex offenders. They can't. Be it's just ironic that there is money to do this. And, yeah. Yeah. So, Katie, you're saying that the state will offer funds to operate a building like this, but not buy or build it or anything like that. So basically pay the rent. So what happens in other counties um, is say we have somebody, we have landlords that just have contracts with us. And then it's kind of revolving. Sometimes clients burn our bridges and we lose them. Yeah. But it's just a revolving, hey, this person's getting out of prison. What yeah. do you have at your house? And say it's a house with five rooms and then the state has a contract that they'll pay whatever I, I don't know I know um when I had when I was an agent in Burnett we had a house and it was 500 a month the state funded for a period of months and then the, until the client got stable and then the client would take over the lease so um and I think Joyce talked about there was a similar program in Minnesota right that was operated that 
Yeah. And we're able to place houses in all these different communities. Mm -hmm. Or I, I know she mentioned in her email, there's the option of just, if it's not a sort like that, um, I mean, TLPs we get, it's hard to develop a TLP because then we have to talk about checkers and having people there. You have to have staff at the house. All we need is linens and a furnished and state will pay. We just need the house. Yes, I was going to ask Andy. Andy, what is our opioid money here today for? Nothing is your take right now. That's... And how much are we going to get? Oh, we have. We have about 121000 in our account right now, which we received the last four months. And that's over and above what Julie has gotten on the grant? Nope. I don't get anything. What Julie, what she saw was Julia's plan is leading us in the direction of how we can allocate those funds. Does somebody have to go or somebody don't want to go? That's probably here for the next session. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So moving on, then, thank you so much. Julie. Yeah, thank you. We look forward to that next month. That would be wonderful. Um, I guess going on, then, um, substance misuse report. I love that one. Yeah. Sorry. Right. <laughs> twice. Okay, so then we have a quick community service updates. Well, after we got three guys graduating. Oh, they have. Yeah. yeah. And so, but the, the three openings are already been filled. So, yeah. They're the waiting list. But yeah, and the work um, community here in Hayward has been very supportive. Good. We've had a few setbacks, but one guy really messed up bad. You know, another guy um, didn't he messed up and he didn't do anything where it had to work. Right? He's down in Milwaukee now at Team Challenge. So and that's a year program, and that's more like a military. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they and he's doing good. So and that's what I think he needed was yeah was that. But no, so there's really um positive things, and it's good to see the um, employers of of the city very mm -hmm. supportive of employees. So, but good. Good. Thank you very much. And I think Gary, this is going to be just right. I mean, oh, yeah. Would you stay with me? Well, it's getting pretty exciting, you have to admit. Well, it's just that I, I'm, I'm pulling so many directions right now. I know. I decided you want to call it the New Year's resolution. I was analyzing my um, schedule and like, man, I am in this, I'm in this, I'm in that. It's like, yeah, this doesn't take a lot of time, but it's just another thing. So, I, I mean, resigning or well, yeah, I was. I was you were, I know. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I sent you a text. I know, right? It should you have to find a person. So, I, you want to think about it, or is it, or, or you want to be officially resigned? Because then we, we definitely need to sign it up. Oh, yeah, and um, it is, it's like. And we will miss you. Well, I've always appreciated your perspective on things because you've always tried to help those individuals, and that's important that we hear that as we to keep our focus on what we're doing. I always appreciate that. Thank you for all that you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really? Yes. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I didn't think that big a you stay for a little bit. All right, I'll see. Right. Uh, it was just, it's just, I get so many. I get so many. I got so many. I remember the show. In fact, I did step back from the league. I was like, I don't know. I just got out of order. Yeah. And I was staying at the men's board, but I was stepping back from being present. I got out of another thing. So I'm like, just. I it is. I got myself going every day. Yeah, right. yeah. And I want to do something I want to do with good. So. Yeah. You do do it good, Gary. Yeah. That's a nice perspective to have. Yeah. 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 And I really, I mean, I think Mark Stoner, too. Yeah. We were all disappointed yeah. that, that now that's still available to put that place of work. But that's that, it, that would take care of housing. and Trust me, I was there with that. I know. Yeah. I know. And it's like that would have been a huge. Yeah. yeah. I think we have Linda Zilmer has her hand up. Linda, did you have a question or comments? Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Okay, well, good. Um, so I guess we should set our next meeting date. It's second Tuesday. Second Tuesday, okay. Eight. Second Tuesday or Wednesday? Or Wednesday, sorry, Wednesday. The eighth. Second meeting. All right. Okay. All right. I'll join. Anybody else? Any okay. future agenda items? I think we'll have um, yeah. and then just my name is Oh, um, oh yeah. <laughs> 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 the I is supposed to be a P. It's all Bellinger. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you everybody very much. Yes, I talked to you a little bit, but we had a good meeting. And we did. I appreciate everybody showing up and please continue to show up. It really, really helps. Thank you.